Now there's another concept called attention we have to learn here. Let's see how it may work. Attention is like the gatekeeper of the senses. And it will direct one track at a time. For example, when I meets an object, I consciousness arises. This is uh, the track shown in yellow here. From I consciousness, I contact arises. From there, the perception of the I can arise. For example, if you look at a red flower, you recognize it's a red flower, that is the I consciousness. And meeting of these three, I contact arises, and there is perception of the color red. And if you immediately close your eyes and smell the flower, then the blue track will happen, that is nose and the smell of the flower, nose consciousness, you recognize the smell of the flower, and there is nose contact, that's a meeting of these three, and there is a feeling of the aroma. You, you may like the feeling, that is pleasant feeling, you may not like the feeling or the smell of the flower, this is unpleasant feeling, or there could be a neutral feeling. This is also illustrated in this slide here, which is a change in the attention by closing your eyes. The same example is taken here, perception of the red color by the eye will soon change to feeling of the aroma of the nose just by closing your eyes. Now you have to remember these things happen at a very rapid speed, less than a nanosecond and it's very hard for us to keep track on this even for a trained mind. Now let's start building our mind work model from here on. From this slide on I will show contact as one contact not as six contacts to make the model less busy. And as we discuss from contact arises mental formations, feeling and perception. Feeling can influence perception. Perception in turn can influence mental formations. Now I'm going to add one more step here. From mental formations, these are the thoughts. Uh, this is what's called applied and sustained thought. It can feed back into the mind as mind objects. In Pali, this is called Vitaka Vichara. Now, there's a further step here. Because of our unwise attention, feeling can lead to craving. Craving can lead to clinging. Clinging can lead to becoming. Becoming can lead to birth. Thereafter, old age, sickness, and death happens. This is called the dependent origination or dependent arising. In Pali, it is the Patichasamapada. In this case, I have taken the Patichasamapada or the dependent origination uh, from the the stage of the six senses, not from the, the conventional way of the 12 step uh, formula. So again, you can see the feeling is the main bait and with our unwise attention, the whole chain of process happens, leading to old age, sickness and death. Now memory can be retrieved as thoughts. I think we discussed this very briefly previously. Whenever uh, the mind, whenever you're in a place, a quiet place, meditating for example, you still have thoughts coming in. So your eyes are closed, it's fairly a quiet place, there is no smells, 
taste or touch, but thoughts keep disturbing your mind. This is how it happens. The mind, uh, the thoughts are retrieved from the mind as mental objects. And this chain of events happens again from mind uh, objects, mind consciousness arises, mind and mind objects. This three together cause mind contact. And from contact, of course, there's mental formations, feelings and perception. Perception can in turn influence mental formations and back again applied and sustained thoughts fed back into the mind as mind objects. This is how we retrieve our thoughts. And there is a phenomenon called wandering mind. Uh, recently uh, scientists have shown that people spend 46.9% of their waking hours thinking about something other than what they are doing. And this mind wandering typically makes them unhappy. This was published in Science uh, recently, uh, November 2010. And it was a very interesting study uh, showing what we call a monkey mind in Buddhism. This concept in uh, Buddhism we also call mental proliferation or Pali Papancha. Let's see how this happens. These are the steps in mental proliferation. Contact can lead to feeling. From feeling it can influence perception. Perception in turn can influence mental formations. Mental formations uh, can then lead to mental proliferation. Mental proliferation about the past, the present and the future. So this is basically a feedback loop. We keep going and going about the past, present and the future. Now this is a clinical model I came up with. <coughs> Excessive mental proliferation uh, can lead to depression and anxiety. For example, if you proliferate the mind excessively about the past, this may lead to depression. Similarly, if you excessively proliferate thoughts about the future, this may lead to anxiety. So this is one way we can apply this model uh, to a clinical scenario. And let's now let's talk about another very important concept called psychophysical organism or in Pali it's called Nama Rupa, translated to English as name and form. Name consists of five things contact, mental formations, feeling, perception, and attention. For the moment, uh, just uh, ignore the unwise part. So, contact. Feelings, mental formations, perception, and attention. So, pas, vedana, sanya, chetana, manasikarya in Pali. What is form? The form is basically the eye, the ear, the nose, tongue, and the body. So, this five things consist of the form. So together the it's called the psychophysical organism, the name and form. There's a 
close relationship between name and form and consciousness. They are interdependent and Buddha said uh, it is something like two stacks of bamboo kept against each other. If you pull one stack, the other one is going to fall. Uh, this was explained in a sutra called Nalakalapiya Sutra. So let's see the relationship uh, between name and form and consciousness in our model. Again, you see the five things, the contact, feeling, information, perception, attention as the name, and the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and the body as the form. What is shown in purple are all the consciousness and you can see the consciousness is sandwiched between name and form. So if you pull out consciousness, the name and form cannot sustain. The same is true if you take out the name and form, consciousness can survive. So they are closely interlink or interdependent each other. 